to my channel today we're going to be talking about the four books i read in the month of February. so let's just go ahead and get started with the video so the first book i ended up reading this month is neon gods by katie roberts this is the first book and i believe it's called the dark olympus series and in this one it is basically a modern retelling of hades and persephone persephone is the daughter of someone who has taken on the role of demeter and olympus and she hates it she has uh six months until her 25th birthday when she can get her inheritance and she can dip she can be out she doesn't have to deal with olympus anymore but one night her mother and zeus announce the engagement between persephone and zeus and she just can't handle it so she ends up running away and she, these men who are she knows are zeus's men end up following her and she runs to the lower city and she crosses the river styx into the arms of hades who she has been taught to believe is a myth that hades isn't real um all of that and so she makes bargain with Hades you know keep me here for six months and so my inheritance comes in and they're like I'm gone and they end up like she but she like ends up falling in love with him and of course it's Katie Roberts so it's spicy literally every Hades and Persephone is retelling I read Hades owns a sex club which is fucking hilarious um they were so cute in this I did a reading vlog which I will try to remember to leave somewhere on the eye but I did absolutely love this and I gave this a four out of five stars um I hated Persephone's mom I hated some of the other Olympuses because they were just very rude they didn't care um and they were very sneaky um the next one follows Persephone's sister Psyche and Eros who is um Aphrodite's son so I'm looking forward to that so yeah four out of five stars The next two books I read are part of a series, so we're going to do one after the other. Uh, so my second book I read this month is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And the third book I read is Good Girl, Bad Blood. So let's talk about this. So this is the first book. And in this one, we follow a girl named Pip. And she is, for her senior capstone project, revisiting the murder of Andy Bell and the suicide of Sal Single. I think that's how you say it. Sal was the one blamed for murdering Andy, who was like the town's princess and all of that. So with the help of Sal's younger brother, Ravi, they work together to under uncover what happened those five years ago that led to the murder of um Andy and Sal killing himself. When I say I devoured this within two and a half days, I freaking love this. I love the series. I loved how she read it. We have like, let me see if I can find a page like entry logs um and all these other things i will be doing a review on this interviews all of that i love this this one i think is my only five star rating of the month um when the plot twist happened that we found out who was the one that killed andy who was the one that killed sal because it was two separate people i was like how is this happening this takes place in connecticut i'm from connecticut but the town is like of course made up I think because I don't think there's like a fair view. I think like it's supposed to be fair field because Monroe is right there next to it. Um, but I absolutely love this five out of five stars. I loved Pip. I loved how she got involved with the case. But because she got so consumed with the case, things just started to fall apart. You know, the lines, her parents, all of that. I love the little budding romance between Pip and Sal's younger brother Ravi. I hated how the townspeople treated Ravi and his family because of what happened and it was always a rumor because there was no like hard evidence that Sal actually killed Andy but of course they didn't care you know it was a Indian boy who did it who killed a white girl so that's all they saw loved it five out of five stars so like I said I read the second book which is good girl bad blood and this takes place two months after the first book Sal and not Sal Ravi and Pip are recording their podcast A Good Girl's Guide to Murder they're covering the um two trials that are going on because of what happened in the first book so I can't spoil it but then her best friend Connor's older brother goes missing on the anniversary of both Sal and Andy being killed Pip swore up and down that she was not going to get involved she wasn't gonna do no more cases but her best friend and her, his mother like begs her so she gets into it again and she uses the podcast to do season two of a good girl's guide to murder um to try to find out where the older brother Ramey reynolds went i loved it so i like this a lot i gave this a four out of five stars it reminded me a lot of only murderers in the building because of the podcast um i think the reason i didn't give this a five star was i wanted it to be a little bit longer because the ending of 
you know what happened again i will be doing a review on this too all three books but we get in a review um i just wish we had more because the reason of who took jamie i understood but i wanted more background on the person who took him than it just being rushed into like five or ten pages like like this much like this much was towards that like why it happened and who the person was did enjoy it four to five stars cannot wait to read the third book and then i finally finally read once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber this is the first book in the i don't even know what the trilogy is but i own the second one and the third one comes out in september so in this one we follow what is her name evelyn jean and she is so desperate to stop the wedding between her stepsister marisol and her what she believes is her true love luke that she makes a deal with one of the fates even though you know it's always told not to the prince of hearts um and when she realizes that she turned them on the stone she drinks the potion, becomes a stone, they all get aligned alive, and for six weeks she is stuck like this. When she is brought back, she is considered the savior, her stepsister is considered the cursed bride, and ever the empress is so impressed with her that they send her to the north to try to, like, show her off, maybe in case the new emperor, Prince Apollo, wants to marry, um, marry her, because in order for him to technically become emperor, he has to have a wife. Um, which does happen because guess who's there? Jack, the Prince of Hearts, the fate that she made the deal with. So she does have, she is forced to marry Prince Apollo, um, when he is supposedly killed. Now she is considered the cursed bride and now she has to work with Jack to try to, try to figure out who murdered Apollo, what didn't her stepsister really curse Luke and all of that. I love this a lot. Again, I feel like the ending was rushed, much like Good Girl, Bad Blood, so I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I will be reading the second book either in March or in April, because I do want to savor it for, like, because the third book don't come out till September. I will be doing a review about this as well. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. So those are all the four books I read in the month of February. I'll be leaving here two videos you guys should go check out. I try to post twice a week and you guys should comment the books that you read in February. Bye guys.